So I thought I'd share two techniques that I like using with markers and it's layers versus blending. So it's layers up first. Uh, and with this technique, what I like to do is start with my very, very lightest color and then work through a whole bunch of layers of different colors until I end and finish up using my darkest color last. So here you can see what I've done is I've laid down the first color on this rose, my very, very lightest color, and I've left the highlights white. So working in layers, the next thing I do is add my sort of second darkest color. So this is Blossom going on next, and you can see that's a little bit darker than the pink pearl that I put on to start with. And I'm making sure that as I use this, I don't use it and go completely over all the pink pearl in the picture. I make sure that some of that pink pearl is still showing through. And this is the sort of basis of that the kind of layers approach. I'm using six colors on this picture from the very lightest to the very darkest. So I want each of those colors to show up at certain parts of the picture. And making sure that you can see both light colors and dark colors is the way that hopefully I'm gonna achieve some depth in this picture. And the biggest difference between this and the blended approach that I'm gonna show you next is that on this particular approach, I let each color dry fully before I put the next one on. So you can see me speed it up here, putting all of the blossom on making sure that I'm leaving quite a bit of the pink pill showing through, uh, but that pink pill was allowed to dry for a good, what, 10 minutes or whatever before I put the blossom on, so I knew the two wouldn't run together. And that will give me the kind of quite crisp edges that you can see already developing with just two colors on here. And that is the kind of look that the layers approach will give you. It'll give you this very kind of stark, hard-edged kind of um, look to your colors which is uh, very, very different, obviously, to the smooth kind of effect that you get from blended uh, markers. It's a much more graphic kind of approach, almost a sort of pop arty kind of approach, where you get these very you know, strong colors against other colors. Uh, so you can sometimes get a bit too much of a strong contrast. You've got to choose your colors carefully uh, to make sure that they, they change gradually as they go up. If you have too much of a change from a light to a much darker color, it can kind of spoil the effect that you're looking for. So hopefully with the third color going on here, peony, what you should be able to see is that there is a, a sort of gentle gradation of tone now. You've you should be able to see pink pearl, then maybe blossom getting a little bit darker, and then peony getting darker again. So hopefully I'm achieving depth, even though I'm not blending the markers together, I'm achieving that depth by letting each of the colors you know, show through uh, instead of just completely covering it with each color. Now the fourth color that I decide to add here uh, it's called Trick or Treat, and as you can see, there's quite a strong contrast. This is quite a lot darker than the previous three that I put on. They were a lot closer to each other in tone. This is quite a jump, like I just talked about. And whilst it looks kind of cool because it's very, very stark contrast between the other colors, it's not um, a smoother sort of gradation of tone, a change of, of light to dark as I would have liked. So once I'd put this on all over, I felt it just looked way too strong and it was overpowering the, uh, the previous three colors that I put on. So I sort of thought about, well, how was I going to uh, you know, balance the picture and, and figure that out? And I decided the best way to do that was to go back and use Peony and to go over the picture. And where I felt as though there was more of a transition needed, I put an extra bit of Peony along that edge. And that's what you can see me doing with these small clips. You can see me going in with Peony and putting that next to Trick or Treat in the hope that it would make the transition, the change from one tone to the next, a little bit more gradual and not as stark, not a stronger contrast uh, as it was previously looking. So it basically served to double up on the peony that was already there and make that twice as dark. So hopefully you can see a bit of depth developing now with the four colors on. This is my fifth color, and here I sort of move away from the pinky kind of purple end of the spectrum straight to the red, because the reference picture I was using, the shadows did look as though they contained quite a lot of bright red. So I thought, well, no way around that. Just got to go in with the red and see how it goes. Uh, and luckily, against the trick or treat, the red worked really well, because the two of them were quite close together in terms of how dark they were, the tone of, of the colors, even though they were two different colors. Um, so once I put on the red bits here, again, leaving lots of trick or treat showing, um, I would got a nice transition between the kind of dark red areas into the sort of, you know, slightly lighter purple areas and then moving all the way through the gears to, you know, my very lightest color. So even though when you're working in layers, you're not blending the colors together, you should still be able to achieve depth and a sort of gradation of dark to light tones uh, and therefore depth by just choosing some good colors and making sure that those colors you know change gradually from light to dark 
Here you can see me putting on my uh, very last, my sixth marker, uh, and this is crimson. And this was just a dark red uh, that I could use to add some little bit of darker shadows, mainly on the left-hand side of the rose, because um, that was the bit that was um, catching the light the least in the reference picture. But yeah, just to give it that final little bit of depth. So that is the layers method. And you can see with the blended approach, I tried a couple of little petals on their own first to make sure that what I was going to try was going to work. And this is like proper science. So I'm using the exact same six color markers and I'm using the exact same type of paper as well. This is a 250 GSM Bristol board paper. So with blending, I'm using the same colors and I'm going to use them in the same order. The most crucial difference is that I'm not letting them dry. So I put on pink pearl, then I put on blossom, now I'm putting on peony, and I'm not letting them dry in between. I'm trying to work as quickly as possible. So as I put these colors on, they're still kind of wet, and they kind of run through the paper, and they do a little bit of blending themselves. Where they haven't quite blended together well enough, what I can do then is go back over the edges of where two colors meet with the lighter colored marker, and hopefully blend those two together which is what you can see me doing here, a little bit of peony over the edge of the trick-or-treat where trick-or-treat meets peony, then a little bit of blossom where peony meets blossom, and then a little bit of pink pearl to finish. So hopefully I'm getting a really gradual change in tone from the very darkest, you see me putting on red here, all the way through the six colors, and the edges blend together. You don't get that very stark change like you do on the layered approach between where a color ends and where a color begins. So up here I had to handle things a little bit differently, um, quite apart from putting the wrong color on first. Uh, this color had to fade away to the white of the petal because the light was so strong here. So I had to use a blender pen here to just go along the very edges of pink pearl and just sort of you know, gradually blend pink pearl into the white of the paper. So here we go, just to make it really clear, you can see me putting on pink pearl first of all. Uh, and as I sort of shade this area, I'm leaving some bits white because there's some quite strong white highlights on this part of the petal. But the next color that I'm going to go up to from Pink Pearl is going to be Blossom. Remember that was my second kind of darkest color. So I'm going to use Blossom to make um, some of these areas a bit darker. Yeah, I needed to fade that bit of Pink Pearl out. So again, I use the Blender pen just along the very edges, just light feathery kind of touches of the pen to kind of blend that. Now here I go with the Blossom and I'm putting Blossom on while that Pink Pearl is still wet. So the, hopefully the two are running together as we speak. Uh, but like I said, if they don't, then I know I can go back in with Pink Pearl just along the edges of the Blossom and that will kind of uh, encourage them to blend together. So here we go, Peony on top of bits of the Blossom while the Blossom is still wet, but also going over the edges again with the Blossom just to encourage that Peony and Blossom to run together and get that nice smooth blend. No edges, hopefully, just a really nice smooth blend from dark to light. And here you can see me going in with a bit more Pink Pearl again to kind of encourage that kind of blend so I'm not getting some hard edges. The main thing about blending is to make sure you work really quickly and to make sure that each of your colors is wet as you add the next one. So you've seen the technique that I used and all I did after that was apply that to each and every single petal, each separately, each one at a time. Um, so that was quite different from the layered approach where you saw me put on all the pink pearl first of all, then all the areas that were blossom and so on. Uh, with blending, I was able to just handle and tackle each petal separately, one at a time. So it was quite easy to make adjustments so I could make each petal work next to another one and, and basically balance the overall picture. Because you're working so quickly all the time to stop the markers drying before you've you know put the next one on, it's, it's a very quick process. I think the entire picture just took me about an hour tops uh, to finish. The layered approach just takes longer because, of course, you're letting each layer, each color layer, dry fully before you start applying the next one. So here they are for comparison. That's the layered on the left and the blended on the right. And you should be able to see the layered version has got a lot stronger in terms of the colors, quite deeper. And that's because every single one of those colors has been layered up one on top of each other. Um, so it's a bit richer. The blended one on the right hand side is a lot softer and smoother looking uh, and not so dark because not all the colors are lying underneath each other. Anyway, I hope that this was useful to you. Uh, and as usual, let me know which one you prefer and why in the comments below.